early on, I felt like uh, I really still had to grind. I really still had to hustle to make sure that I have my own. And when I decided to divorce my ex, um, if I didn't have my own thing going, I wouldn't have left as quickly. Right. As you wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't have yeah. been able to. Hello there, fams, and welcome back to another episode of Femininity by Rachel V. I am your host, Rachel V. And I am Steph Heinz. Hi, Steph. Hi, Rach. <laughs> so today, ladies, we are going to be talking about elevating yourself, keeping your standards high, and having your own, the mm. importance of having your own. Absolutely. We all want family. Well, not all of us. Some of us. Right. <laughs> Majority of women want families. We want the white picket fence. We want the successful husband. We want the kids in private school. We want all of that. We want successful careers. Well, some of us do. Some of us have brought into the idea of stay-at-home moms. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you feel about that, Stephanie? I mean, I guess because it's a little bit removed from me. I mean, right now I don't have any kids. I'm not married. I want both. Um, but I definitely put my career first. And I was living in a place that I knew wouldn't, it wouldn't prioritize that. And I, I was a, it was something that I was willing to do earlier. Um, and so I made the investment in my career and to having my own and building my own within certain industries so that, you know, I, I totally agree with the having your own. Um, it's just, it, it's a power. It's, it's having your own power, having your own funds, having your, it's not even just the money. It's the wherewithal and the skill set to hustle should you need to. So no knock on stay at home moms. I think that's one of the hardest things in the world. The real hood is motherhood kind of thing. Absolutely. But I think that you just need to have a few tricks in your back pocket that if, you know, life happens that you could survive, that you could put a plan in action and that you have skill sets that you could bring in the bacon if you needed to. Exactly. So one of the things I credit myself for is maintaining a business. Totally. Um, I started my uh, hair salon. I opened my hair salon when I was 26 years old. And although I, I desperately wanted to be that mom, that, that soccer mom that mm. was available to her, her child, right. especially when I had my son, I wanted to be available to him. I wanted to be able to take him to school you know, be the type of mom to make his breakfast every morning, which was something I couldn't do with Rache because mm. I was a single mom and I was by myself. So when I got married and I had my son, something in me just wouldn't let my guard down enough for me. And you know what? I'm not even going to say it was something in me. I didn't feel safe. Right. Feel safe you felt like you had to protect yourself. I felt like, um, and that, that should have been a sign for me. Um, but Early on, I felt like uh, I really still had to grind. I really still had to hustle to make sure that I have my own. And when I decided to divorce my ex, um, if I didn't have my own thing going, I wouldn't have left as quickly. Right. As you wouldn't have been able to. I wouldn't yeah. have been able to, honestly. And um, a lot of women, I know that they are in these relationships, not even marriages. They are in relationships because they have allowed someone to control their whole thing. Yeah, don't have that on. So I'm very happy. Yeah, I think that's part of the reason why I'm not married. Because, yeah, I just haven't, I haven't given up any of that power at all. Like, I, I don't know any other way. That's the truth. I don't know any other way than hustling and making it my own. Um, but if someone was, like, making those decisions for me, I don't know how I would. I I guess I've never prioritized someone taking care of me, which I think that 
when people see me, they think that that's what's happening and it couldn't be further from the truth. I definitely have chosen love over money. Um, money over love. No, I, I will. No, I'm saying like when I've in love, I've chosen love over, oh, he can take care of me. And so that's what I'm saying. But, um, but I think I've always had strong women around me. I like just like that energy. And even though my parents have been in, together since they were 14 and 15 and they like still make out, they, they are still in love. Um, my mom, I think because her, like she kind of had to grow up at a young age. Her dad was really sick when she was eight years old. She's like, you have to prepare. Like, God forbid life happens. You have to have your own. Or even like you have to miss them. You have to. So my mom actually has pushed my dad to be more independent than he would like to be. He would love to be so dependent on her. But she's like, go on boys trips, go do this. Even this Valentine's Day, I was like, you're alone. You let dad go. And she was like, we did it the day before. I'm good to have my time. Well, is she doing it in a way of preparing him? No, it's that it's that she's like, it's healthy for the relationship. When anyone tells, when anyone asks my mom advice, like she, that's her thing. Like you have to have your own friends, your own your own things just in case it gets taken away from you meaning like if someone passes away or something that's not within your control you have to have so if one of my mom's girlfriends gets divorced or something like that she's like the first one she still goes and visits her college roommate like we'll drive and do all that she really invests in her lady circle and her and her tribe and we talked about that on our past right yes that you really have to invest in your friends and like really take the energy and cultivate those relationships because it's not just about having a partner, but it's also having a sisterhood. Yeah. And also if you're in a partnership, you can't like, they can't just the way you can't, you can't bear the brunt of all of their problems and the same thing with them. And it's not that you're putting that on your friends, but it's good to bounce, have other people that you lean into and that you trust and you go to for advice. And that's another important thing because it will help your relationship. I agree. Do you feel like you are in survival mode? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I I, I think I do have this constant, I guess, thing in my... I, Like I said on the last episode, like, you never... If you're a successful person, you never meet the bar. And it just keeps going up. And so I think that makes me... I have things in my head that I want to achieve or that equate to its success in my head and so until I meet that I am my own worst critic where I'm like it's it's not success yet so recently I went on a date right and the person that I was you know at dinner with asked me what keeps me going mm. like and I thought about it and I was like life yeah <laughs> Life keeps me going. Um, normally, I feel like I, I I will keep going for my kids like all the time. Like they are like my number one thing. Right. Like, for my two kids, and you know, Rache, she's grown now, so she, I feel like she don't need me no more, but she probably do. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> what keeps you going? Because what? Just my path alone keeps me like up and going. Yeah, I think. Um, I think it's the goals that I set for myself and like wanting to feel that success. I do think that motivation is something that it is impacted by the circle around you. So out, out, outer factors do impact motivation. Drive is within yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you get that reinforcement from other people that you're doing well or that you look good or that you, um, you are a symbol of success to them that makes for me it's like a casino rush like i want more absolutely i'm looking at how good you look in this case uh -huh. <laughs> i can't see myself over here but i can see you look so amazing <laughs> thank you I look at this girl popping off in her femininity pink i guess stephanie up so much I she swear. does i guess i so bad so um yeah so i was telling him like my goals keep me up. Like, mm. like when I think about something that I want to do, 
like it'll haunt me. Like the oh that yeah, haunts. So it's 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 something that's just like just being an ambitious woman, and I know everyone isn't as ambitious as you and I. But being an ambitious woman, you like we need. That. I feel like we yeah. need more of that. I feel like be around more people that are ambitious. Well, well, just like the the quote about if you're the smartest person in the room, you're you're in the wrong room. Like you're not gonna rise up. You're not gonna get better. The same thing is with success. A lot of times people are intimidated by, oh my god, that person has so much money, or they own this business, or whatever, and so they feel less about themselves to be in that same circle. But if you get around that, you will learn how to unlock that. And I'm glad you said that. So I want to say mm-hmm. this may this may have been. 2016 17 okay I remember it was a time where I felt like I was the motivator motivating person all the time in my circle yeah and I was so frustrated yeah 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 that. it's I, a heavy weight to it carry really is and that's when I knew that I had to change my circle right I didn't have people around me that were pushing I had people around me that was just kind of sitting around and like looking at what I was doing and was like sit down right like why are you doing so much and I was like why are you doing so little right 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 right. so you're right um motivation comes from your circle and having great people to speak affirmations to you and also tell you like you could be doing way more than what you're doing right like you know you're better than this you're greater than this so I think that's 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 really important or even a friend that says, like, have you thought about it this way? Or have you thought about this would leverage X, Y, and Z? Those are real friends. Exactly. Exactly. So, Stephanie, tell us, what are you doing, what you're working on? What are you doing to stay motivated? All of that. Oh, um, right now, I guess what's motivating me is all the new beginnings that I have in my life and wanting to feel settled in those, not complacent by any means, but wanting to feel like, I I said to you, I don't typically have like a breakdown. Mm -hmm. My body will shut down. If if I'm move if I'm doing the most and I haven't taken a beat, my body will start to shut down, meaning I'll get sick or something. And so right now my new beginnings and wanting to feel like I've set a routine and feeling um at home to some degree will I think is what's motivating me and that's like the light at the end of the tunnel for me so like even I you know have my app I love working out but I feel like even since moving to Florida I haven't had a workout where I feel like that's like a Steph Heinz workout Mm -hmm. and so that is like once I get in that routine I I will feel like okay that's an unlock for me or just feeling like I'm building my community. Like even this podcast is a huge step for me towards that and feeling like, okay, I live in Florida. I am working on, you know, my tribe and my life here. And then having the, f- the fact that I just started a new job, I think there are certain success points that I'm being impatient with that I really want. Um, so I think that's right now what's driving me. You know what? Alignment is so important. Oh, my mic sounds so much better since I flipped it up. I was trying to figure it out. Like, why does my mic sound like Stephanie's mic? <laughs> um, but alignment is so important because literally when we met and we started talking about like our goals and what we wanted to do and the things that, you know, we had going on in our lives. When I sit and listen to you talk about just moving from New York, moving to Florida, now you're my co-host. Hell yeah. We're, we're supporting each other on the podcast. Right. You're building a community. I'm building a community. And just just that alignment alone. Totally. Like helping you manifest to what you really, really need. But also, you know what you do, Stephanie, that I love and admire about you? You keep shit so positive. <laughs> I can tell when you're having a bad day, though. You be kind of like a little. Quiet. Boy. I'm no. quiet. You be like, what's up? Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'll yes. back. <laughs> but um, you know, you, you your ability to keep things positive and constantly look at things in a different light all the time. I was not like that at all. Like growing up, I will say that that is something that I had to work on. 
So if you are someone that you're like, it's, I saw this amazing meme that was like, worrying is manifesting for bad. It's true. And the same thing is if you are like we talked about in the last episode, throwing hate, giving messages like that to other people, that's what you're going to get back. And that also is really actually hatred on yourself or your own situation. And it's it's an unhappiness there. But um, I know how good it feels to have people lift me up. And so it costs me nothing to do the same to you or even the stranger walking down the street and saying like, dang, you have the best legs, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that, yeah. When you tell me that I like do backflips in my head because my legs have been the hardest thing for me. So every time you say that, I'm like, (gasps) you know, but that's the thing. You don't even know that. Or like I've had people come up to me before and been like, oh my God, I love your lips. And like, little do you know it's like I have a birth defect that's huge for me like that person just made my month by something that took no money out of their pocket and it took 10 seconds and so why wouldn't you do that and if you if you can do that in your life it's going to multiply it's going to come back to you so Steph yes what are your non-negotiables with yourself like I have so the reason why I want to bring this up, I want to okay. make sure that we talk about this, is because I feel like when women do get into relationships, when women do have families, when women do have businesses, and I talk about this so much on a podcast, they stop taking care of themselves. It's so funny you say that because I'm the opposite. Like, my body looks yeah, the best like when that. I'm with someone. Mm-hmm. I, like, I had to set an alarm in my phone because... Like, when I'm single, I would go to bed with snacks instead of a person. (laughs) And so I had to be like, I am not going to let my singleness, like, make me chunk up. Yeah. So I would set an alarm like, no, 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 snacks not at this time. Girl, when I'm single, I'm eating ice cream. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, I love ice cream. But, um, no, my non-negotiables with myself, definitely there's a lot around working out just because it gives me so much energy and it makes me feel good. Like, it makes me feel powerful. I can wake up in the morning and have so much anxiety or not have clarity on how I'm going to approach my day. And even one mile on the treadmill, first thing in the morning, I'm like, okay, I can do it like that. And I'm not a morning person. And I've, that's, I've harnessed that. So that's a non-negotiable for me. There's also certain nutrition things that are non-negotiables for me that just a healthier me is a happier me. Like what? Um, I intermittent fast. And so I'm someone that like I once I start eating in the day, I can't stop snacking. Oh, really? And so I just delay the time that I start eating, which also allows my body to digest all the food that I've eaten the day before. Got it. Got it. That's one. Um, and but there are definitely some beauty things that are non negotiables for me. Yeah, so let's talk about and that I've put the money in. I mean, you keep talking about my hair. I I am an extension girl. Um, I had tapins for like a decade, I think, which is so expensive. It was just the best thing because this was over here getting her extensions taken out and buying new hair. Yeah, I wasn't reusing any of it because I had a standard for myself and I felt like a bald ego if I didn't. How much were you spending? Oh, too much. It's too gross. Much. It's I gross. You, so you know I know. Yeah. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I, you guys know I'm, I'm a hairstylist and the best purchasing that. Thank you. Purchasing that hair over again. I know. No, it actually even my hairstylist was like, I am robbing you. You have to stop. So, it was not being like pushed for a up sale. It was completely my own. Part of that was I always was big hair big boobs like that was my thing my identity and someone one time highlighted my hair wrong way it broke off and that was that was all she wrote the money alone that you spend on yourself on a monthly basis yeah should be enough to make sure that you're not taking a bullshit from no man yeah a hundred percent like listen a hundred percent I think also it's like you could not have a man you could have some issues with um, work or something. But if you feel good when you leave the house, you're going to bring that energy. You're going to own it. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, also people, this is maybe a controversial thing to say. Yeah. But 
like people want to do work with people that care about themselves because if you care about yourself, you're going to care about their business. You're going to mm-hmm. protect it in that same regard. And so I do think that that's important because a lot of people, even not with families, like get burnout from work and things like that. And I look, I, I'm, I'm not great at that either. Like I have definitely, and that's why sometimes I will go into a recluse because I'm like, I can't be seen like this, but I also need my time from the burnout. But if you are showing up, you have to show up for the job you want. You have to show up for the life you want. You have to show up for the body you want. Visualization is super important, but you are your own brand, even if you are not an influencer on the internet. And you have to carry yourself that way. So other morning non-negotiables for me, I, I have like built this full routine. So I wake up and the first thing that I do is splash cold water on my face to try to wake up because I'm not a morning person. I have laid my gym clothes out the night before, get in those. I go to make a certain drink to like get my energy going that's organic and then I ice roll my face. My son does that. I ice roll my face with a metal ice roller. Um, shout out Skinny Confidential. You can sponsor this podcast. And um, so I love that. And then I also do gua sha. So I'm like, I, okay, by the I way, gua sha. I wake up and I look like I got, like I stuck my face in bees, a bee's nest. Like I'm super, super swollen. So that's another like incentive for me to run first thing in the morning mm-hmm. because when I run in the morning, my swelling comes out of my face. It starts to drain. But Sweating. I, yeah. So I, so I first start with the ice roller and the gua sha and then I go run. I come back. I have another drink that I drink, and then I do red light therapy. I have a oh, the whole thing. I have do red light therapy while I'm standing on a power plate that does more lymphatic drainage while I'm blow drying my hair. Oh God! So I've showered, but like I task batch. I see as m- how many things can I do at once I love in that. the same time. Um, and I wish I could be better at this with work because it's, it's harder with your mind, but I definitely have things that I do every single day so that it just becomes like autopilot mm-hmm. and it makes it easier to do it first thing in the morning. That's a good thing. I wish a uh, self-care thing was, was like work too. Yeah. Because I want to like work out. I want to like take care of my skin. I want to like put on my makeup. I want to do my lip gloss. Yeah. <laughs> I remember like at a young age looking at women and being like, I don't understand why they wouldn't wear makeup every day. Like jokes on me, Mm -hmm. you just don't have the time or the energy. And also if you don't, you can't make it look good every single day. So yes, I don't wear a full face every single day, but if I know that I need to, if I'm, when I go into the office, I got to beat down, you know, like I, I definitely, that's an opportunity to make money. It's an opportunity to reinforce someone's trust in me I take care of myself I'm gonna take care of you you know that's the thing so I do try to like live out that way and then um I think those are all my biggest morning routine non-negotiables <laughs> okay so my non-negotiables for myself is obviously working out that's yeah like I do not like body fat I just don't <laughs> yeah um yeah. uh, so a cardio, I love, I don't necessarily run on a treadmill. I walk um, high incline. And yeah. It feels so good. Like I'm working the mess out of my glutes. Yeah, yeah. And my thighs. So, and then I, I like a little bit of like a cellulite. I think it's kind of sexy, uh, but not too much. I'm and I, glad to hear that because I got tiger stripes too. Well, I have I them in the say, weirdest places. You know, my daughter has tiger stripes and I look at her and be like, Really? It looks so good. Like, I have them in the weirdest places, like here. No. Do you know guys like stretch marks? Oh, my gosh. I hope. Like, please comment below. No. <laughs> they they like stretch marks. Guys, guys like I mean, I think guys want... Ones on the, the guys want women to look like women. I totally agree with that. Um, but, yeah, and then there are things that women care about and think matter, and they don't, you know? Listen, ladies, I love stretch marks. 
That's so, <laughs> clip that. That's so funny. What? Yeah, I like them on the sides and I like them on the butt. Well, I also think, I mean, I think that they look better on black women than white. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. Mine are like pink and then they get white when I get spray tan and they, <laughs> I just don't look right. They look so good to me. Me and Stephanie was talking um, earlier. She was asking me about. Um, I asked you if you've ever done a skin laser and she said no. And I was like, I, that is just, I've just been staring at her skin. Like just, <laughs> she looks so young. It looks, she has perfect, flawless skin. Like this is not a filter. This is real. Uh, and she mm-hmm. said, no, she's never done a skin laser. And I'm like, <sighs> I've never done a skin laser. I'm down for trying anything that's going to make my skin clear. Clear, smooth, no texture. Totally. But I, I'm down for all of that. Like, but that's another. Um, but I've done all that. Goal of mine is I have to have my skincare routine. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is so important to me. Like, I'm doing it. Like, my teeth. That's another thing. Real big. On- oh, you just got teeth. I just got you my got teeth. teeth. This is my second set, but this is the real. Well, well, I only had six before, but now I got the real, real. I love them. They look good, and they're not like white. I know it's so funny because my my dentist has done like a lot of rappers, uh-huh. and she was like, "Oh, cool. I want to know." Uh, she's gone viral for for doing DJ Khaled, that whole big thing. Uh-huh. Um, and she does Fat Joe and. Mm-hmm. She ha- like was like four fingers in my mouth and was like, oh, they look so good. Like, you know, they look natural. They look real. You don't want to look like a rapper. And in my head, I was like, oh, my God, I think I want to look like a rapper. <laughs> but I, it, but they look great and I love them. But at first I was like, I want them like whiter than white can be. And I want, you know, I I think I wanted chiclets, but I'm glad she didn't let me get no, chiclets. that you didn't get any. Yeah. No, sis. No, <laughs> First of all, Stephanie is so into all of the, like, urban culture. She knows more shit than I do. She's like, what's going on? Did you hear about this? Like, no, Stephanie, I didn't hear. No, I don't know what's going on. I love gossip. (laughs) I love, love. It's so easy now with the internet, too, because you you can do it in the 10 minutes that you're trying to wake yourself up. Just scroll in bed (laughs) and just get your little tea talk in, and you're good. What's your uh, favorite gossip? Column or gossip site? Media. I don't know. Instagram. I, Instagram. TikTok, mm, yeah, I don't even know what my favorite resource is. I just think that because my algorithm is set for that, it's hurled at me every single day. Mm-hmm. So like, I'm like on all the Bravo gossip, all on all the pop culture gossip, mm-hmm. and it just like comes comes to me. You know where I get all my gossip from? Snapchat. Okay. I'm not on it that often, so I don't... Well, they started putting all the news and everything on that, so that right. makes sense. They're so I see everything on Snapchat. That's that's the only place I see it. That's so funny. And on my Instagram, I only see, like, beauty. I see fashion. I see travel. And I see a lot of food. Well, that's really smart because now you've set different algorithms for different um, apps. And so now you only open them up when you know what you want to... Right. Yeah. So that's that's the only time I really that's good. Gossip. So my other non negotiable obviously is my clothes. Like, yeah. I mean as a Yeah, yeah, yeah. The as the as look, the like the I have a certain standard for myself and like even right now, like I said, I haven't been I haven't gotten like a real Steph Heinz workout since moving to Florida. I know I don't look bad. I just don't feel like it's the energy that I move out. It's the toxins that I move out. Like I want to look terrific. I want that feeling. That, but you know, but yes, m- my clothes, my beauty, my skincare, all that. It's like, uh, so you it, literally moved here. I feel like on the 20th. Yeah. 16th. I moved into my apartment. I think. Okay. The 16th. So think about it. You're not even a, you just a month yeah a month but I traveled twice in that time as well right um but yeah it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to get your mojo back your yeah yeah because you have a, you now you need a life routine totally you have a beauty routine yeah you have a health routine but now you need a new life routine that's what it is it's like making the time for all of it and for me now the bigger investment too is like making my community down here and I because I don't have kids I don't have the like oh, 
let's just, we'll do a play date and then I'll meet the other moms or something like that. And that's something I'm really cognizant so of. What we have to do is be intentional because we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Now that you're here, yes. you're pretty much settled. Mm-hmm. We have to make sure that we plan like a date. Yeah. Not just work because okay. it's pretty much work. Yeah. This is fun though, but this is still work. So we have to make sure that we well, we're not socializing with anyone other than ourselves. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because, you know, I'd be perfectly fine. Like, come over, let's have yeah. champagne. Like, yeah. no, let's go outside. Yes. And mingle with the folks and stuff. Like, we got to go outside and have a good time. So that's why we have to make sure we plan something for your birthday. Yes. For sure. What's my other non-negotiable for myself? Sleep. Oh, I'm really bad at sleep. And it's the best beauty. It's the best, best beauty routine. Yes. Sis is definitely going to get her rest. I cannot play about my rest. I'm really, I have a really cranky attitude when I don't get enough sleep. Rache knows this. She's, she knows this either two things. You're tired or you're hungry. Mm. Isn't that right, Rache? Or something made me mad. <laughs> but yeah, that's another non-negotiable of mine is getting my rest. So working out, um, my clothes, obviously eating good, like I literally only eat twice a day. Mm. I know you're going to probably say something about this, but I literally only eat twice a day. um, And that's because basically I have a a trauma, childhood trauma. Um, My mother died when I was 20. And I remember all of the things that she used to eat. She was a smoker and she used to eat. And when Mm. I say she used to eat, she used to make pork chops and just all kinds of bullshit. Um, so she wasn't the most healthiest person. So my diet is, is, is really important to me, but Mm -hmm. I do not eat that much. I think the heaviest I was, was when I'm, when we first met. Okay. And that's because I was in that relationship and that man was feeding me, (laughs) (laughs) but literally I, I it's so funny because that's a non-negotiable for me in a relationship is that a guy is super healthy Mm -hmm. because like, if you were asking me to get pizza every day, I'm going to say no, but also, like, I don't want that influence. Like, I want you to be on, like, with my goals aligned. Right. Now, what if you meet someone and you got to kind of coach them? Uh, if they're open to it, I can help lead a ha- horse to water. But, like, you have to have the drive. You're going to stay with it. You're going to. So if, if, if they're like, yes, I want to get healthy. I want to do this. Fine. <laughs> But um, if it's like, if there's someone that's like, I never go to the gym or if they're like, yeah, like I don't, that's cool. I, I don't yeah. really care about that. It's, it's going to bring me down. Never going to the gym is like, I just don't understand why Who does that. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Were we being judgy just now? That was, it was, but like, it's just, it's just. We, when I say that, for me, it's that it's the mental clarity, mm-hmm. the energy, like it's therapy. It is literally a form of therapy. It doesn't feel good. I'm not saying that like I go in there and I'm like, I love this every time. Like, no, I'm sweating and I'm gross and that, but it's how I feel leaving the gym. Like I'm accomplished. If you do nothing in your day that day, like you still showed up for yourself. I think so too. I think going to like how do you release all of the stress from yeah day-to-day work like no no no. that that's what it is it's the release and the unlock it's so like i am my my brain feels clearer i agree like working paying bills making decisions creating businesses answering emails text messages conflicts you may have you know all these things bring on stress and not working out like well, you're not going to bring that on me. No, exactly. <laughs> so, the one, I think I'm such a relaxed girl where I don't need to talk to my person every day that that can turn into a long distance situation that can turn into. Oh, yeah. No, that's not me. I'm like, I need a good morning text. I need text through the day call and I need like a good night. You do. Oh, yeah. I'm a Pisces, girl. We bleed love. (laughs) And I'm an Aquarius. Yeah. You're a wanderlust, (laughs) want to travel, free spirit. And I'm like, um, do you love me now? Okay, what about now? I got to miss you. I want you to go get some busy. (laughs) I want you to, you know, do some stuff, go to some meetings, you know, go somewhere for a day or two. I, I mean... 
I don't mind communication every day, but just I don't need a good morning, good night. Maybe like a good morning, maybe not a good night. Maybe like a little conversation. Which is so funny. Too much conversation. No. I want someone obsessed with you me. You know what it is? I like per- in person conversation. Yeah. Way better in person than that. No, I, I, I guess because of work, I'm always on my phone. Mm-hmm. So, like, I want to know, like, hey, thinking about you. Or, Have you ever noticed that when we talk on text, I'm super dry? Yeah, but that's fine because then we just call. But that's the thing. Like, I guess I'm such a communicator that I can, like, flex to someone's needs on that. Yeah, I'm just talking on text. I've dated a guy that wanted to FaceTime a lot. A a few that wanted to FaceTime all the time. And that is, like, I do, like, FaceTime here and there if Mm -hmm. it's scheduled. But I'm, like, dang, like, I don't want to... Like, I don't, like, I'm tired. Like, you know, that one I could do without as much. There's a FaceTime. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I got to get my light right. If I'm going to do that, I got to get a makeup. Did you say light? Like, I got to, like, look Girl, good. Oh, my God. Listen, I will have my scarf on. If you FaceTime me, you're going to get that scarf. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. going to get whatever. If you FaceTime me without an appointment, you won't get whatever you see. It's just, oh, my God. That's amazing. Whatever you see. It, I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not. I'm not um, dressing it up for you. If you didn't call, if you just called to see what I was doing, you going up. All right, so ladies, I am going to have to cut our podcast short because I cannot get my mic together. I'm so sorry. But before we leave, I'm going to need you to update me on your fit, fit check. My fit check. Run it down. Okay. Run it down. So I have on my... Let me hold your mic, stuff. <laughs> okay, you go, girl. So I have on, oh my God, this sounds amazing. So I have on my femininity bodysuit, and you can now get these online. I have on a pair of jeans from, I think these are from Zara. And I have on my Louboutins. Hold on, let me take these off so you guys can see these really, really clear. First of all, these are my, like, vintage Louboutins. I love these. They're a studded booty. The heel is not aggressive, so I can walk in these. (laughs) I can walk in these and be in these and be sexy for at least four to five hours. So I love these. They have, like, the gold studs and everything. So, yeah, that's my fit. And, you know, yeah, that's, that's what it's given. So I'm going to give you the mic back, Steph. Okay. All right. So my fit check is um, I'm still, I moved, but I'm always repping New York. Absolutely. So um, the ribbed crop tank is from Zara. The gemmed denim is a boot cut, cut, which I normally don't wear boot cut, but we're trying new things. And I just got these at Zara. So these are there now. And then the chain is this unbelievable um, non-tarnish from Artisan Jewelry. Love it. Yes. Love it. So, ladies, thank you for being here for another episode of Femininity by Rachel V. I am Rachel. And I am and I am staff. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content in the channel. Please, likes help the channel grow so if you are a supporter already you're already here please make sure you like make sure you comment and if you are liking the content make sure you subscribe um you know we really appreciate you being here we appreciate you helping us grow our channel and we will see you the next time